Good morning, welcome back to Left Brain Liz. I'm Liz, happy soap making Sunday. My hair is really big today and I love it. Anyway, today I'm gonna to be attempting to make a clover leaf soap. I have this fragrance called Clover, Green Clover and Aloe, and it's going to be my very first ever attempt at piping soap. I don't know if you've ever seen that. I'm sure people who've been around have, but uh, I've never done it because I've never been patient enough to wait for it to get to the phase where it's thick enough to pipe. So, um, without further ado, as always, safety first. And let's get this party started. So here are the materials that I'm going to be using. I have this green aloe and clover fragrance oil from Wholesale Supplies Plus, and I have this um, lime green mojito mica powder, which is kind of more of like a yellow green. I have this um, Sunday Fun Day Yellow Myco Powder, which I used in the January Ember Soap. And then I have this Baby Green Grasshopper, or Baby Grasshopper Green Myco Powder, which is more of like a blue green. And uh, so I already have my oils melted, and uh, I'm just kind of stirring it around to make sure it's homogenous. And uh, my temperature doesn't matter as much right now. I think it's around like 118. So I'm just going to go with it. My lye is at room temp. So it should harmonize the temperature when I pour it in there. But uh, I'm just going to pour it down the side here of the spatula to make sure that it doesn't splash around. It's kind of a delicate process. You don't want to get this stuff on your skin or in your eyes. Um, and then uh, I uh, like to clean up as I go. So I just, you know, put that in the sink, stir it around a little bit. Um, make sure that uh, it's not going to start seizing or anything like that. But I'm going to go ahead and speed up the mixing of this so that you don't have to hear it. And we're right about there. I want it kind of like a pudding consistency. It's about right where we need it to be right now. And uh, I'm not going to fragrance the colored portions. I'm only going to fragrance the white part and I did not color the white part at all. So this is the natural color. There's no titanium dioxide or anything. But I'm gonna try to um, give equal portions to each color here. Um, my initial intention is to make this kind of like a delicate top, but um, I kind of poured too much soap in the cup, so I don't think that's gonna happen. I think I'm just like gonna have to cover the entire top, and that's okay too. Um, but, uh, in the future, if I do something like that, I'm probably going to co color the inside of the soap as well to kind of give it a little bit more dimension than just being a white bar with some um, decoration on top in color. But right now it's a little off camera, but I'm mixing the fragrance in there. And uh, this particular fragrance did not affect my soap batter, which is really good. It, it never has in the past, but... Um, yeah, basically, once I first put it in there, it kind of turns a little white because of the emulsion factor. But um, other than that, it's, you know, you stir it, give it a good stir, and it's fine. So right now, what I'm going to do is just take this base part and pour that in my mold, which I have off here. My little spare mold, too. Um, <clears throat> I have some limited space here when I'm trying to work. I want to give you everything that you can see, but um, that's okay. So anyway, I'm just using my basic loaf mold here, and I'm going to pour this in here. Um, there's a little red speck there, and I think that might have come from my spatula, which uh, is not good, but um, I'll have to inspect the spatula, and I may have to retire it, but it's been with me for a long time, so... I wouldn't be surprised, but um, taking my time <clears throat> kind of scraping this out of here because I did pour so much soap into the colored portions. I want to make sure I have as much possible um, in the bottom portion so that it makes up the bulk of the soap bar. Um, and this uh, batter is really fluid, so it works pretty well. And um, yeah. But uh, 
I don't know, I've never um, never done a project like this before. I've seen people do it, and I think it looks really cool. And my initial thought, though, is kind of like, it's a bar of soap. Why do you need all this, like, cake piping, icing-looking stuff on it? I mean, um, I'm a traditionalist. I kind of like, you know, personally, I use my own soap, of course. But personally, I just like a regular bar in the shower. I don't like to have to mess with different textures, like while I'm rolling around in my hand. Or I don't use, like, a washcloth to, like, suds it up or anything like that. But I finally relented, and I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and try this piping thing. It seems so popular right now. So my original thought was to make this like a delicate top, like I said earlier. And I had something in mind, but then when I went to my drawer to look at my piping tools, I realized I did not have a pinhole type, I don't know how to explain it, like a pinhole type tip where you can get like the deli delicate like pencil-like lines all I had was just the regular decorative tips like the leaves and stuff like that so I just uh, went with it and I also thought I had plastic ones but apparently I don't the ones I have are stainless steel and that's good too because you don't want to use aluminum or anything with soap batter because it's just gonna react with the aluminum as my color cups sat here also they got really thick um, which is fine, but usually I use my little hand mixer there to kind of mix in the color, but it's not really uh, working very well because it's so thick and my hand mixer's battery is kind of running low, so it just it's struggling a little bit. So what I did was I took a spoon and I just kind of hand mixed each thing, and in the next part I'm just going to speed that up so that because it takes a while, so I'm just going to speed it up right now. I made these colors really thick and uh, so they're really pigmented and that's fine too because it's just kind of decoration and it's not fragrant so that's not going to mess with it either and it kind of helps give it a little bit of a stiffness that I need and uh, here I am just filling the bags in preparation for the piping activity. Okay so I started with the yellow and I have it in kind of like a starburst type uh, tip which um, I, you know, again, I initially just wanted this to be a little kind of simple, delicate top, but I had way too much soap. So um, I started by layering the sides with some like starburst um, little dollops, I guess. And uh, after I did this initial line, I realized I, had, I still had so much soap left. So I went ahead and did a second little line to kind of give it a little bit more dimension. And uh, you can see that here. And this piped really well. Uh, it wasn't hot or too runny or anything like that. And it looked pretty good. So the second tip I used, I had to practice with this one a little bit. It's the leaf tip. And I still don't think I know how to do this very well. But there's a trick to it. And I guess like to make it like a tip tip you kind of have to twist it at the end and like after I was doing this so much I kind of gave up on that and I just started like squeezing it out and um, again I had so much of this green and this is the lime the mojito lime one that's the, the yellow green color <laughs> but uh, I think if I practice a little bit more I can get this leaf shape a little bit better um, but then they started to kind of tilt a little bit because I was twisting or I just kind of kept it at an angle the whole time. Um, eh, but that's okay. I think it turned out fine. But, um, you can see when I, you know, like I said in the very beginning, I was just too impatient to pipe, but I like to decorate cakes. I don't know why I never really tried it with soap. So, um, now I can say I've tried it, so hooray. But after this initial line, I went back and did another line, uh, a layer on top, um, kind of like overlapping leaves. I think, I think it looks good with the overlaps, but design-wise, I could probably have done something a little bit different. Again, with the too much soap, um, my my original design idea was to make actual clovers but again you know without the the line tip i couldn't draw them and the closest thing i had was the tip that i had 
that I used for the um, with the baby green grasshopper color um, and it still <laughs> didn't work out right but that's fine I just kind of um, I think it still looks pretty neat and it was my first attempt at doing this and I'd call it a success because it kind of you know came out okay but see now since um, since I can't really do this in a delicate way I decided mid piping that I'm like okay well I'm just gonna cover the whole surface so I don't want any white showing through at all so I'm going through and making a third layer on top of the other two layers to cover that side bit of white that was peeking through and uh, now I'm gonna go in with the uh, baby grasshopper color <laughs> whatever it's called and this is like the angled tip so it's like wider on one side and it comes down into like a a thinner so you can see it's kind of like thick on the top and then like thinner at the bottom so I didn't really know how to use this one I kind of practiced with it a little bit off camera but I really couldn't get into a good groove with it so probably ought to just look up some tutorials on how to use the different cake tips and different designs you can do with them but um, I mean whenever I decorate cakes I typically use the starburst and I use um, I cheat a little bit and I use the Russian piping tips but uh, I still even the Russian piping tips I still don't really have the hang of those either but that'll be something interesting to try as well the only thing is I don't know what those Russian piping tips are made of so there's a possibility that they could react with my soap better and I don't want that to happen so I'm just like losing my patience here and I'm just kind of going back and forth um, I could have probably made clover leaves with this but um, I would have been constantly rotating my my um, mold and it just would have been annoying so again with the filling in with the white uh, I'm just gonna draw kind of um, a line uh, kind of a textured line I guess it's not like a true line but a line to kind of uh, border that bit there and hide some of the imperfections of the overlap and then I'm gonna go back in with my yellow and overlap that so that it looks more dimensional and doesn't look like everything's just kind of sitting on top or sitting or butting up next to each other I don't know what I'm trying to say but um, kind of give it a little bit more dimension there and I started to run out of my yellow because this was a bigger tip and so more batter was kind of sitting in the base of the tip and so I had to use my thumb to kind of like push into the um, into the tip to kind of get that little bit out and uh, go back in with my lime green mojito soap and uh, or well I guess I'm gonna go in with the baby green and cover this first as you can tell I'm doing the voiceover and just kinda watching this <laughs> I was listening to a book on tape while I was doing this because um, I didn't know what to expect so I didn't really want to be talking through it because there'd probably be a lot of gaps in me going oh uh, oh uh, what <laughs> So I'm just going back over and and rehashing what I did here. But yeah, so again, I bordered that one bit to kind of separate it a little bit from the um, lime green mojito color. And then I'm going to kind of overlap again. Um, with, so this will be layer number four of the leaves. But these are a little bit smaller. Um, but to give it that dimension and not to make it look like it's just kind of like sitting flatly against each other I thought it was best to do it this way I'm gonna attempt this again for sure because I thought this was kind of fun um, I think as far as from a soap making perspective one of the tips I would give anyone attempting to do this is if you're gonna pipe anything on the top definitely don't fragrance it because fragrances always alter the chemistry of your soap better in such a way that you cannot control that and um, you, you'll get plenty of fragrance just fragrancing the base part and um, I would just leave it at that 
But anyway, so here's the final product and uh, I'm going to let it sit in the oven and do its thing and uh, I'll probably cut it tomorrow. Okay, here's the final product. I didn't bother filming the cutting of it because there's no design on the inside. It's just plain, but the, the tops speak for themselves. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it looks pretty good. And uh, it will not hinder me from trying to pipe soap again in the future. But anyway, uh, thank you for watching. And if you'd like to subscribe, just click my portrait on the right. And if you'd like to receive notification when I post, just click on the bell and tune in next time for another soap making extravaganza. Bye.